to my mind, sports is one of the most important businesses that we think about. It's not only important in terms of entertainment, but it's also important in terms of social structure and social life. And so those people who have helped build the programs uh, that help manage and market what we do in the business world of sports, uh, I think and become a very important part of what we do. One of our uh, alumni is, uh, is Joel Siegel, and he's here to, we're, to, we're here to celebrate him tonight. He's a legend in this area. Um, and has an unbelievable roster of people who he works for and with. Uh, and we're so happy to call him one of our own and to, to really celebrate his presence. Tonight, we gather to celebrate the achievements of Joel Siegel, an acclaimed NFL athlete representative. Joel and I first had the opportunity of meeting in early 1990s when he agreed to be a guest speaker in my sports marketing class. The passion he shared not only for the profession, but for his players was as remarkable then as it is now. Please welcome to the stage, Joel Siegel. Thank you. Thank you. As you can tell by my size, I'm not one of his players. <laughs> um, in 1990, my wife and I had the privilege of being invited when Joel's father became a Supreme Court judge. And I remember that day, looking in Joel's eyes with tears swelling up in his eyes, how proud he was of his father taking the oath of office. And today I look down at his father, and I see how proud you are, how times have changed. Look at your son today, it's pretty remarkable. After Joel graduated law school, my wife and I were sitting in our apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, and he called us. He wanted to meet us at the Polo Grounds, a bar around the corner from our apartment. He wanted to tell us something. We thought maybe he was going to tell us he's getting married. <laughs> That's never happened. <laughs> we met him at the Polo Grounds, and he looked me on the eye and said, I know what I want to do with the rest of my life. I want to be a sports agent. I said to myself, I want to be the President of the United States. <laughs> Just look where we are now. But what's important about Joel, and I grew up with him since I'm 11 years old, his determination and his passion for whatever he did was true. He doesn't care about fame or notoriety. He cares about being the best he can possibly be at what he does. I can honestly say he's the best son anybody can have, the best brother anybody can have, the best agent anybody can have, the best friend anyone can have. And I truly salute you. You are a remarkable person. You deserve everything tonight. Congratulations to Joel and to GW's Hall of Fame. I don't go that far back with Joel, but uh, when I was back at Notre Dame, Lou Holtz told me one time, he says, you know why you're such a good recruiter? This was uh, back before I was married. He says, because you date women and you go out and you know how to chase women. I says, you know, that's the thing that Joel and I have in, had in common. And that's why he is <laughs> such a great talent evaluator recruiter. Look at the list of people, fumble. Look at the list of people that he has. And uh, I think that helps Joel with his recruiting. I mean, he asked my wife one time, he says, uh, can I date your sister? And she said, no, I don't want a flavor of the month. <laughs> but uh, I, I got a story about uh, last year, I had a parent call me and say, can you recommend, and this was a guy who was going to be a top pick, uh, can you recommend an agent for me? I, I would like somebody. And I, says, I said, I got a great guy for you. I said, uh, I said, I got a guy who's smart, he's honest, he'll work his butt off, he'll get a great deal for you, he cares about his players. I, says, I said, he calls me every Sunday night, you know, wanting to know how Jason Campbell did. I'd be driving home from FedEx Field, how'd Jason do tonight? You know, what do I need to talk to him about? And, uh, and uh, that was the type of guy that I wanted to recommend to this family. So I gave him, 
It was Sergio Kendall at the time whose dad called me, and I talked to Sergio, I talked to the dad, and I recommended Joel Hiley, and I didn't even bring up. I said, there's nobody else you even want to talk to. Joel's the best, best guy. And I said, I've been around the business now 20 years. And I said, if, if I needed an agent, I would hire Joel. I said, that's what I think of Joel. I think he's an outstanding agent. Congratulations, Joel. You deserve this. And uh, it shows by the, you know, the guys that show up here, you know, what they think of you. I know what Jason thought of you. I know what all the Redskin players thought of you. I, and I and, uh, enjoyed dealing with you. We had great deals. I mean, I, you know, Joel would always wait until the, you know, if you, if you got a uh, Joel draft pick, he was going to wait till the end. It was probably going to be a one or two day holdout, and he was going to wait till the pick in front and the pick behind got done. Then that guy would get in. But uh, Joel, congratulations. Uh, enjoyed it, and, and most of all, I enjoyed the friendship. Because a lot of times when you get fired from a place like I, you know, you forget uh, a lot of people don't call you anymore. <laughs> Joel is a true friend. You know, calls me all the time, and, and I respect Joel, and uh, I enjoy his friendship, and you know, enjoy him as a friend. Thanks, Joel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joel, uh, I'm honored to be here to speak on your behalf. I look out and look at all these students uh, who are here and your clients who are here, and one thing that we all have and we're all, all of us will say on your behalf is that you're very dedicated, you're very loyal, uh, and you stick to those who uh, ask you to be their friends. As a trial lawyer, uh, Joel and I have a lot of conversations, and we talk about a lot of things, and I know how much you care for your clients. Joel has called me on a number of occasions to ask me about uh, individual client issues. And, you know, we sit there and we, this is before any money issues come up, any problems come up, uh, we sit there and say, what's, what's best for your, your client? I know that when I walked in, there were two things I was very happy to see today. One, if you know Joel, Joel never wears a tie. <laughs> and to see him here today uh, with a tie on uh, means a lot. And secondly, to see Joel without that cell phone in his hand. And he had to turn his cell phone off uh, for a few minutes. You know, for those of us who, uh, I also majored um, in business administration. And for those of us who did not have the pleasure of being uh, gifted uh, with athletic skills, uh, like a lot of the players uh, and ex-players have. You know, we all wanted to, you know, either play NBA or play NFL uh, or play professional sports. Uh, but something told us that if you don't have that skill, you know, there are a lot of times, uh, you know, I'm very close with uh, one of the next speakers, with Mike Vick, and I always tell Mike I can outrun him. I know I can't, Mike. <laughs> tell him I can, you know, beat him in golf. I think I can beat him in golf. But for those of us who don't have, are not gifted with the skills that these professional athletes are gifted with, it's nice to know that if you pursue your educational uh, dreams, uh, that there are agents who are able to do for athletes, that there are lawyers uh, who are able to do for athletes things that they cannot do. Uh, so doctor, when you sit in class and you talk about uh, if you don't make it in sports, if you don't become a professional athlete, um, I think that today is an example of a person who has all the respect of all the athletes, who has all the respect of all the owners, and all the respects of your, his school. And there's no higher tribute, Joel, that you can receive than to have your university call you back and say, we want our students to come in to see that if they too have dreams like you, work like you, they too can achieve what it is that may make them happy if they're not able to qualify as professional athletes. This is your day, man. I hope you enjoy it. I didn't know if I was going to come and speak personally or roast Jay yesterday. But uh, mom and dad, don't worry. I'm going to talk from the heart. Um, three minutes really doesn't do justice for me to speak about what this man has meant for me and my family and my life. I met Joe about 14 years ago, and he was coming to me looking for a job like these guys. <laughs> and uh, as the avid salesman, he won me over. He won my family over. And uh, things come full circle now. When I was done, things didn't work out for me. 
And um, I got injured playing football. Joe doesn't remember, but during the recruiting process, my mother said to him, Joe, if things don't work out for my son, would you give him a job? And sure enough, things came full circle when I was coming to him for a job. I'm honored to say today, 14 years later, that he's since made me a partner in a business that took him 20 years to build. For me personally, I come from what most people would consider a poverty-stricken community. Joe had the opportunity to take the ride through the neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, 14 years later, man, he gave me an opportunity to change my life. He gave me an opportunity to make a way for my family, my immediate and extended family. And it's an honor, and I tell you all the time, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart, man. I love you. You're like a brother, an uncle, an advisor, a second father to me. And I'm grateful for everything that you've done for me and my family to this point. And it's an honor for Lisa and George Washington to have this man as alumni. And it's an honor for Joel. Congratulations, man. Every accolade, every honor, every distinguishment you get, you deserve it, man. And I love you. I appreciate you. I would have to say I'm very honored to be here. Uh, Joel, I commend you for everything that you've achieved and everything that you've done. And Shafi just said it best. Joe deserves every accolade, every award that he receives. And another thing that he said was really registered and that I, that I just thought about was that Joe has been like a second father to me in my life. We met 10 years ago. I was in search for an agent, uh, just going through a, a, a period where, you know, it, may, can be, it, can, it can be hard for athletes uh, to make a decision but you have to go with somebody. I chose not to go with Joel at the time, and at that time, I really regretted it. I went through a couple years with, with another agent, and three years later, came back and found Joel. He was very persistent in his quest to, to work with me, but at the same time, I knew it was the best thing for me. And ever since then, a relationship that was started eight years ago has been nothing but a success. It's been a great time have great memories. Throughout all the things that I've been through, he's always been there as a confidant, as a father figure, as a man who could give me advice. So this is not surprising to me. Joel, I want to say I appreciate you, everything that you've done for me and my family, for myself, what you stand for, and what you represent. I wouldn't be anywhere else in this world today but here with you to celebrate your day. Thanks for everything that you've done. I appreciate you, and you do look good in your suit. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. I remember when it all began. About 20 some odd years ago, Joel was employed as an associate with a very prominent Long Island, New York firm assigned to the environmental department. Jill and Alan Miller, our cousins, were at our home one night having dinner, and Joel joined us, and the conversation centered around how Joel was doing at the firm, whether he was happy, when Joel proclaimed, I am not happy there. All they do is put me in the law library. I'm doing research all the time. I want to get out. I'm bored. I've had it. Well, I was a little disappointed since I had high hopes that Joel would continue and pursue his legal career, particularly because of his background of having graduated from this fine school magna cum laude, and from Hofstra Law School with the Law Review. But I also understood that every young person had the right to charter his own course and be whatever he wanted to be. I 
I did ask Joel what he wanted to do if he didn't want to practice law. And like somebody said, they asked him, Bob Schmertz, he said, I want to be a player representative. And I replied that every red-blooded American boy had those same aspirations. He was insistent. I encouraged him because in my heart, I always had the feeling that my son could be anything that he wanted to be. It turns out that Joel had an ace up his sleeve. Hofstra was adjacent to where the New York Jets worked out in Hempstead. And every once in a while after school, he'd go over and watch the boys work out. He befriended one of the players, a hard-running fullback who could get you that short yardage for a first down and maybe bang it in from the one or two yard line for a touchdown. That player was Brad Baxter. And I'm sure some of you here remember him. He was really a terrific guy. Armed with his first client, Joel embarked on his new career, worked hard, and today is recognized as one of the leading player representatives in the United States. Throughout his career, Joel's strong leadership, clear foresight, and unfailing adherence to the highest of personal and professional standards have been a continuous source of inspiration to all of us who know him. He has parlayed a keen mind with outstanding organizational ability, the knack of getting along with people from all walks of life, good instincts, good decision-making. But the most important attribute that he possesses is, as Mike said and a few of the others said, he has that intense loyalty to his players. Once you become a Joel Siegel client, you become part of his extended family. He will watch your back, whether popular or unpopular. He will back you to the hilt. He will be your greatest advocate. Congratulations, Joel, on this prestigious honor. We couldn't be prouder. What makes your induction into the GW Business Hall of Fame is that it is your alma mater and it is one of the finest universities in the United States of America. It is our fervent hope that the good Lord continue to grant you good health success and productivity in all of your future endeavors. And since, uh, incidentally, tomorrow happens to be your birthday, we wish you a good one with many happy returns. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce our guest of honor, my son and best friend, Joel, but before I do it, <laughs> I forgot to say that, Joel, I speak for mom and I speak for your sister, Lisa, when I say that you are the best son, the best sister. Brother. Brother. <laughs> I should have gotten off when I was ahead. Brother, and to your nieces, uh, Jenna and Carly, and uh, we're grateful for that. And as I said, I have the great pleasure to introduce you, our guest of honor, my son and best friend, Joel Siegel. I'm leaving my stuff on there. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. I, I really appreciate it. And I never really won an award or won anything before. So it's neat where I now know why all the great athletes and people who win things always thank their teammates or thank their support system. Because it's clear to me that I wouldn't be here, really, unless I got pretty lucky. 
had met amazing clients, the best family and good friends, and my clients have become my best friends. So now everybody's here together. To all the students, appreciate you coming. I don't know if I was in college, I'd have come to see me. <laughs> um, sometimes when I'm at universities like this or people ask me to, to speak, they say, how did you do such like, pretty good contracts or how do you guys get paid so much money and stuff? And I really say it's easy. Great clients. If you have great clients, you have great leverage. So over the years, I've received a, a degree of adulation for doing some pretty good contracts, and it's really easy. It's about having unbelievable guys to represent who make me look really smart. I've fostered those relationships. We're all close, and I, I think I do a better job because I care about my guys, but the bottom line, the leverage is created by getting great players. Speaking about relationships, we're in a tough time right now. We're in the middle of a lockout. And one thing I know, we've prepared for this. And when we talk about relationships and being with the guys and all being together, I know one thing, we're going to fight no matter how hard, how long it is to get a good, fair deal for the players. We're ready, we're prepared, and then we'll play some football. At work, because I'm the older veteran, I receive a lot of the adulation, some newspaper stuff. But really, you heard Shafi earlier and the great support team I have at work. It's not about me at all. It's about everybody else doing this thing together, working hard, and making sure that nobody outworks us ever. I know still at this advanced age, I wake up every morning and I look at the client list. I so say, what can I do? What can I do? Who needs this? Eat a little lunch. What can the guys do? What can I do for the players? Afternoon, same thing. I'll look at the list. Two in the morning, phone will ring, ready for action. It doesn't change. It's never changed, and it won't change, or I have to get a new job. Well, I shouldn't call it a job because I don't have a job. I have an existence representing the greatest guys in the world. I think that you need a foundation to understand how to respect people and how to grow up the right way. And I've been lucky. I just met my dad, and my mom is there in the front row with him, my sister Leon. Her name's Lisa. We call her Leon. And they raised me to treat people as you want to be treated, do it with respect and dignity. And my dad always said, try not to brag and try not to too much. Let other people get glory. Let other people... Uh, speak about you and, and, and say kind things if you're lucky enough for that. And they taught me, and it's amazing. Like Dad said, he's my best friend by far a million times in the world. Mama's the best mom ever. And Leon is the toughest, coolest super mom in the world. So I really appreciate everything, and I'm glad you get to enjoy this. Um, my professional career started right here at George Washington University. And I must have received 20 calls from old friends that if they thought it'd be anyone being here, it wouldn't be me. So it's kind of good to beat the odds and get this great honor. Um, you know, the, the, specifically, the sports management program here run by Lisa Delpy Narati is, is unbelievable. Her passion, her expertise, guarantee she knows more sports than I do and probably everyone in the room put together. Unbelievable. I think if I had her when I was in school, I'd really be a super agent. And, and, and it's really lucky to get to know her and be with her under her guidance and learn and be a part of the program, which I hope to keep being invited to do. Right next to Lisa is Dean Guthrie, whose background is impeccable. He's one of those guys you sit in a room and you can learn from. We had lunch a few weeks ago, and we discussed the new executive MBA program which is focusing on getting degrees in advanced business from the George Washington University through a program that works with all the guys' schedules, which is really difficult. And the dean told me about it. I was so excited, in the middle of lunch, I started calling the guys up and saying, hey, maybe we could get a degree. So I hope that program keeps going, getting stronger, and that was really exciting. I heard that uh, President Knapp is here today, so... I'm honored that he's here. 
and I'm looking forward to spending some time. And, you know, the way Lisa put this together, it's like so professional and so real. It's really, really humbling and amazing to me, and I thank you. I thank the dean for having me here. I thank Jeff Garmhausen. I think all the guys will for putting this together. He was amazing in the work he did and everybody around that, that put this together. So I uh, want to thank the inductees who preceded me. That's some list. And thanks again for having me, and hopefully we'll all have some fun tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. That was great. And thanks to all of those who have uh, came here today to, to make some, to share some words about you and the feelings that they have, because you obviously are an extraordinary uh, personality and an influence on so many. And for that, we, we recognize your efforts. Uh, there's many in the audience that aspire to, to be a Joel Siegel. And, you know, so... One question, these are all questions from the audience. So it goes, uh, did you know that this is what you wanted to be when you were in school here at no, TW? No, no, no interest, none at all. I didn't think about it. I wanted to follow my dad and be a, big, a, be a fancy lawyer. And, and so did you have any advice for those that want to? They, they know right now that that's what they want to do. Yeah, I always say this. I think that the best way to do it is either do it the way I did it and pretty much start from scratch, put a few bucks together and just work, or you can get a big company and get an internship and work your way up. So I think there are two or three ways to do it. Those are two I'd suggest. Okay, good. How do you balance moral values versus money while dealing with your clients? Well, I think if you keep the good moral values, the money will come. Excellent answer. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest challenge you have in representing players as it relates to your rela relationship with them? I mean, obviously, there's a business and a personal side I mean, to everything. It's not a challenge. I, I have a job that's not a job. I get to hang with these awesome guys. We talk, we laugh, and we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps that's the perspective that more agents should take. <laughs> Many people, you know, we read about it in the headlines, you know, this deal done, this player signed, but can you walk us through the steps from uh, how you recruit players to signing them, you know, negotiating with Vinny out here? Yeah. I think that when you get to meet guys, you form a relationship slowly. And I always say when I'm recruiting, you really don't earn trust until you've done a deal with a player. We all could like each other, and, but if you don't keep your promise and get a player paid, this is a business first, then you earn trust. You have to follow through on what you say you do and keep your word. Don't be a big shot. Don't tell a player who's getting $5, you can get him $6. Under promise, over deliver, and then win. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I very much enjoyed listening to uh, Mr. Siegel's uh, remarks and also to your uh, comments. Uh, we haven't had really a chance to, to meet, and I'm looking forward to our time together this evening uh, so we get to know each other a little bit better. But uh, I think the wisdom we've been giving our students is something that's uh, great for them to hear, and uh, I think that's what's so great about this program that uh, Lisa has put together, uh, that it really is a way of connecting students with people that they can learn from and look up to. And so it's very my great pleasure now to read the citation which the dean and I are about to uh, present. The George Washington University School of Business hereby inducts Joel Siegel, Bachelor of Arts, Class of 1986, into the Sports Executives Hall of Fame. For years of accomplishments as one of the most powerful sports agents in the National Football League, for representing multiple first round draft picks and Pro Bowl players, negotiating numerous record setting contracts, and being named as one of the top 10 most powerful sports agents in America by Business Insider Law Review, and for overall achievement in the industry of sports management with all the rights, duties, privileges, and opportunities pertaining thereto, March 24th, 2011. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 
Congratulations again, you. again, Joel. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, before closing, I want to offer a special recognition to the NFL players uh, who are with us uh, to celebrate the achievements of Joel Siegel. Would you please stand? Again, this is a true testament to Joel to have so many of his players here from all parts of the United States, and we appreciate you coming and sharing this moment with us. Again, thank you all for taking the time to, to be with us, and uh, if you would like to form a line on the right side, uh, or my right, and we'll uh, have an opportunity for you to come up and congratulate Joel personally. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you and uh, enjoy the evening.